Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free English ebook before it's gone. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. This series will teach you some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some new ways to ask someone, what's your name? including one that you can use when you have forgotten someone's name. Now, what is your name was probably one of the first questions you learned when you started studying English. I have to tell you, though, that most native speakers of English would never say this. In English, just like in other languages, it is often more polite to be a little indirect. Of course, the easiest way to avoid asking the question directly is to not ask at all. Just introduce yourself and most people will respond by doing the same. When introducing yourself, simple is nearly always best. Just say, hi, I'm Alicia. To show that you want to know the other person's name, just add, and you, at the end. Hi, I'm Alicia. And you? Hi, I'm Alicia. And you? Just like before, take out my name, Alicia, and put your name in its place. After you say this, the other person will tell you his or her name. Okay, now let's talk about an embarrassing situation that happens to everybody. You have already met this person once before, but you have forgotten their name. The most polite thing to do in this situation is to apologize and ask again. There's a simple way to do this that's also polite. I'm sorry, what was your name again? I'm sorry, what was your name again? This sentence is very similar to, what's your name? But it has three important differences. First, we say, I'm sorry. A small apology can go a long way. After that, we say, what was your name? This is just like, what is your name? But instead of is, we use the past tense was. This is really important as it tells the other person that you remember meeting them. You haven't forgotten him or her. You have just forgotten the name. This little word makes all the difference. I'm sorry. What was your name? Finally, we add again to the end. This is another hint that tells the other person that you remember learning his or her name before, but you just can't recall it right now. I'm sorry, what was your name again? This phrase is appropriate for both formal and informal situations. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. In the United States, it's normal to address people by name in conversation more than once. In both formal and informal situations, it's a way to show respect or interest in the other person and can help you make friends. It is also a great way to practice someone's name so you don't forget it. If you are talking to someone named Anne, for example, instead of just, what do you do for fun? You could say, Anne, what do you do for fun? You can also put the name at the end of the sentence. What do you do for fun, Anne? You don't want to say the person's name too often or it will sound a little strange. But if you practice someone's name like this, you won't forget it. And people love to hear their own name. In this lesson, we learned what to say when we forget someone's name. In the next lesson, you'll learn what to say when you want to get in touch with someone, whether by telephone, email, or even newer ways to communicate. What's your favorite 
Let us know in the comments and join us next time for the sixth English in three minutes lesson. See you next time. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's British English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Gina. This series will teach you some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some new ways to ask someone, what's your name? including one that you can use when you've forgotten someone's name. Now, what's your name was probably one of the first questions you learned when you started studying English. I have to tell you though that most native speakers of English would never say this. In English, just like in other languages, it is often more polite to be a little indirect. Of course, the easiest way to avoid asking the question directly is not to ask at all. Just introduce yourself and most people will respond by doing the same. When introducing yourself, simple is nearly always best. Just say, hi, I'm Gina. To show that you want to know the other person's name, just add, and you, at the end. Hi, I'm Gina. And you? Hi, I'm Gina. And you? Just like before, take out my name, Gina, and put your name in its place. After you say this, the person will tell you his or her name. OK, now let's talk about an embarrassing situation that happens to everybody. You've already met somebody once before, but you've forgotten their name. The most polite thing to do in this situation is to apologize and ask again. There's a simple way to do this that's also polite. I'm sorry, what was your name again? I'm sorry, what was your name again? This sentence is very similar to what's your name, but it has three important differences. First, we say, I'm sorry. A small apology can go a long way. After that, we say, what was your name? This is just like, what is your name? But instead of is, we use the past tense, was. This is really important, as it tells the other person that you remember meeting them. You haven't forgotten him or her, you've just forgotten the name. This little word makes all the difference. I'm sorry, what was your name? Finally, we add again to the end. This is another hint that tells the other person that you remember learning his or her name before, but you just can't recall it right now. I'm sorry, what was your name again? This phrase is appropriate for both formal and informal situations. Now it's time for Gina's tips. In the United Kingdom, it's normal to address people by name in conversation more than once. In both formal and informal situations, it's a way to show respect or interest in the other person and can help you make friends. It is also a great way to practice someone's name so you don't forget it. If you are talking to someone named Andy, for example, instead of just what do you do for fun? You could say, Andy, what do you do for fun? You can also put the name at the end of the sentence. What do you do for fun, Andy? You don't want to say the person's name too often, or it will sound a little strange. But if you practice someone's name like this, you won't forget it, and people love to hear their own name. In this lesson, we learned what to say when we forget someone's name. In the next lesson, you'll learn what to say when you want to get in touch with someone, whether by telephone, email, or even newer ways to communicate.
What's your favourite? Let us know in the comments and join us for the next British English in 3 minutes lesson. See you next time! Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing! But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors, plus tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye!
Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some ways to get in touch with someone after you have met them once already. In a lot of textbooks, you've probably seen the question, what's your phone number? What's your phone number? It's a very useful question, but there are two problems with it. First, it can sound a little too direct, especially when talking to members of the opposite sex. And second, People use the phone a lot less these days than they used to. Instead, they might prefer to connect by email or on a social network like Facebook. To start, though, a simple variation on what's your phone number that sounds a little less direct is, could I get your number? Could I get your number? We start the sentence with could, which softens the request. Next, say, I, then get, and finally, your number, which is short for your phone number. This question is slightly casual, but it can be used in almost any situation. Recently, many people prefer to use email rather than the phone to communicate. Asking someone for his or her email address is also a little less direct than asking for their phone number. Could I get your email address? Could I get your email address? We just took could I get your number and replaced number with email address. It's that simple. Could I get your email address? If someone asks you either of these questions, you can reply by saying, sure, my phone number is, sure, my phone number is, or sure, my email address is, Sure, my email address is, or sure, it's, and then say your phone number or email address at the end. By the way, if you're having any trouble with numbers, check out EnglishClass101.com's core word lists for these and other key vocabulary words. Each word comes with a picture, audio samples so you can perfect your pronunciation, and sample sentences and phrases so you can master its use in a sentence. Recently, many people use social networks like Facebook or LinkedIn or an online chatting service like Skype to communicate. People might ask you about these, especially if they are younger. If someone wants to connect with you through one of these services, they may simply ask, are you on, followed by the name of the service. Are you on Facebook? Are you on Facebook? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you on Skype? Are you on Skype? To answer, you can simply say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. If you respond with, yes, I am, the other person may ask how they can connect with you on one of these services. Of course, if you're not on one of these services, they won't be able to contact you. If you still would like to stay in touch with the person, though, you can say, no, but my email address is, or no, but my phone number is, and then say your email address or phone number. By telling the other person a different way they can contact you, you'll show them that you want to hear from them. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. If you ask someone for their phone number, their email address, or some other form of contact information, they will usually give it to you if you have gotten to know them a little beforehand. If you ask too early in the conversation, though, they may be hesitant about sharing that information. The key is to make sure you talk for some time before requesting this kind of personal information. In this lesson, we learned how to ask for a person's contact information. But what's the best way to ask someone to meet you later? Find out next time in the seventh English in three minutes lesson. See you next time.
Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's British English in 3 Minutes. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Gina. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask and say where you live. Usually, someone will ask you where you live as a polite question after they've asked you your name, where you're from, and what you do for a living. They'll say, so where do you live? This is inviting you to keep making conversation. There are lots of ways you could answer this question, but here are some of the most common. You could say, do you know? And then the name of the area you live in. Do you know County Durham? Or you could mention a local landmark, like near the library or near the cinema. You could also answer by telling the person what train line you live on, if your city has a train network, or what station is the nearest to your house, on the central line or near Piccadilly. So as you can see, there are lots of possible ways to answer the question, where do you live? Once you've told them, the other person might respond in one of the following ways. Oh yeah, I know it. Or, I live near there. Or maybe, I'm afraid I don't know it. The other person is just being polite by showing interest. So you can reply by saying something like, oh really? A good way to continue the conversation is to ask them the same question in return. You can just say, how about you? Or, where do you live? Put some stress on the you. Where do you live? Now it's time for Gina's tips. Asking where someone lives is a way to try to find out something you have in common with the person you're talking to. So if you're familiar with the area the other person lives in, make some comments about it. That's a really nice area. Or, the park there is really pretty. Anything is fine, as long as you don't say anything negative that could be taken as offensive, like, that area has a high crime rate, or I hear that area is really dangerous. Do you know how to ask which school someone goes to? Find out in the next British English in 3 Minutes lesson. See you next time! Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin! Number 1. Listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comments section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye!
Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, Alicia here. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask what someone's hobbies are without using the word hobbies. You've probably seen the question, do you have any hobbies? Or, what are your hobbies? in an English textbook before. However, native English speakers almost never use the word hobbies when asking about them. A much more natural way to ask the same question is, what do you do for fun? Let's practice this question. What do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? You can also ask, what do you do in your free time? What do you do in your free time? So how would you answer this question? Let's look at how native speakers would do it. The easiest way is to say, I like to, or just, I like, followed by what you like to do. For example, if you like watching movies, you could say, I like to watch movies, or I like watching movies. I like to watch movies, or I like watching movies. And if you like golf, you could say, I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. You can emphasize how much you like your hobby by adding a word like really in front of like. For example, I really like watching movies. On the other hand, if you want to play down how much you like something, you can say kind of. For example, I kind of like playing tennis. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. If you don't have any special hobbies or don't want to be specific, a good way to reply is, I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. Just use I like and add hanging out with my friends and then add and stuff like that. How do you answer the question, where are you from? It doesn't even have a verb. We'll cover this and more in the next English in 3 Minutes lesson. See you next time! Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's British English in 3 Minutes. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, Gina here. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask what someone's hobbies are without using the word hobbies. You've probably seen the question, do you have any hobbies? Or what are your hobbies in an English textbook before? However, native English speakers almost never use the word hobbies when asking about them. A much more natural way to ask the same question is, what do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? You can also ask, what do you do in your spare time? What do you do in your spare time? So, how would you answer this question? Let's look at how native speakers would do it. The easiest way is to say, I like to, or just, I like, followed by what you like to do. For example, if you like watching films, you could say, 
I like to watch films, or I like watching films. I like to watch films, or I like watching films. And if you like golf, you could say, "I like to play golf," or "I like playing golf." I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. You can emphasize how much you like your hobby by adding a word like "really" in front of "like." For example. I really like watching films. On the other hand, if you want to play down how much you like something, you can say "kind of." For example, I kind of like playing tennis. Now it's time for Gina's tips. If you don't have any special hobbies, or you don't want to be specific, a good way to reply is, "I like spending time with my friends." And stuff like that. I like spending time with my friends, and stuff like that. Just use I like, and add spending time with my friends, and then add and stuff like that. How do you answer the question "Where are you from"? It doesn't even have a verb. We'll cover this and more in the next British English in three minutes lesson. See you next time. If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently, just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry. In this guide, you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. One, where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need. Two, the best way to learn grammar that's right for your level. And three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. Two, how do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. Three, what if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the grammar bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the Grammar Bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent. The best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. Be sure to access the related lessons inside the Grammar Bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So, if you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in Three Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. 
Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. This series explains some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some different ways people will ask you, where are you from? First though, where are you from? Can mean many things. It can mean, what city are you from? Or, what state are you from? In fact, Americans ask this question to each other all the time to learn what part of America the other person comes from. Of course, though, it can also mean, what country are you from? If you want to answer this question, there are two ways to do it. You can say, I'm plus your nationality, as in, I'm Japanese, or I'm Brazilian. Or you can say, I'm from, plus the country you are from, as in, I'm from Italy, or I'm from Thailand. If you're from a really famous city or place, you can say that too. For example, I'm from Beijing, or I'm from New Delhi. Many times, though, Americans won't ask, what country are you from? Or even, where are you from? In many casual situations, they will say it in a simpler way. Where are you from? This is just like, where are you from? But they take out the are. Where are you from? You can use this, too, in casual situations. Of course, in the United States, as in other parts of the world, people may be a little more indirect because they want to be polite. To do this, they might ask you if you are from the place where they meet you. For example, if you meet someone in New York, they might ask, are you from New York? Or if you are in San Diego, they might ask, are you from San Diego? Many parts of the United States are very multicultural, so asking the question this way avoids what could be an embarrassing mistake. You can answer this the same way you answer, where are you from? Just add a simple no in front. For example, you can say no plus I'm plus nationality. No, I'm French. Or no plus I'm from plus country. No, I'm from Russia. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. Since the United States is very large, people you meet may take great pride in the place or region they come from. If you ask someone about where they're from, they may respond by saying something like West Coast, or the East Coast, or California, or the South, or the Midwest. If they answer in this way, it usually means they are interested in talking more about their region and how it differs from others. In this lesson, we learned some different ways to ask, where are you from? Do you know what to ask when you don't know someone's name? Of course you do. But what do you say when you have forgotten someone's name? Find out next time in the fifth English in Three Minutes lesson. See you next time. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's British English in Three Minutes, the fastest easiest and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Gina. This series explains some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some different ways people will ask you, where are you from? First though, where are you from can mean many different things. It can mean, which city are you from, or which country are you from? In fact, Brits ask this question to each other all the time, 
to learn which part of the UK the other person comes from. If you want to answer this question, there are two ways to do it. You can say, I'm, and then your nationality, as in, I'm Japanese, or I'm Brazilian. Or you can say, I'm from, and then the country you are from, as in, I'm from Italy, or I'm from Thailand. If you're from a really famous city or place, you can say that too. For example, I'm from Beijing, or I'm from New Delhi. Of course, in the United Kingdom, as in other parts of the world, people may be a little more indirect because they want to be polite. To do this, they might ask you if you are from the place where they met you. For example, if you meet someone in London, they might ask, are you from London? Or, if you are in York, they might ask, are you from York? Many parts of the United Kingdom are very multicultural, so asking the question this way avoids what could be an embarrassing mistake. You can answer this the same way you answer, where are you from? Just add a simple no in front. For example, you can say, no, I'm, and then your nationality. No, I'm French. Or, no, I'm from, and then your country. No, I'm from Russia. Now it's time for Gina's tips. The UK is a diverse place. People you meet may take great pride in the place or region they come from. If you ask someone about where they're from, they may respond by saying something like Yorkshire, Lancashire or Hertfordshire. If they answer in this way, it usually means they are interested in talking more about their region and how it differs from others. In this lesson, we learned some different ways to ask, where are you from? Do you know what to ask when you don't know someone's name? Of course you do. But what do you say when you've forgotten someone's name? Find out in the next British English in 3 Minutes lesson. See you next time! Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free English ebook before it's gone.